welcome back and welcome to this very cozy setup at least i hope you think it's cozy i got my big ass blanket right here and today i want to talk all things winter christmasy kind of now specifically i'm going to talk about one book in particular but in general i want to tell you about my winter faves i'm not claiming that any of these are in any way shape or form original we all have that basic bitch inside of us and that's okay there's like nothing wrong with that so let me give you my winter recommendations before i head into the book this video is actually about so music i like to hear in the winter of course there could not be a christmas season without michael buble's winter album my favorite ones are his rendition of all i want for christmas number five i really also love um number nine christmas baby please come home and number 12 cold december night i think those are my favorite obviously michael buble gotta give him a shout out now that he needs this but you know another uh christmas album i really love is celine dion's ones this is really old i think it's like from the 90s wait I'm from the 90s, so uh, it's not really old. It is perfectly adequately old. <laughs> no, just kidding. But this is also really nice. I actually listened to it. And here, I especially like O oh, Come All Ye Faithful. Her rendition of it is spectacular. And like last but not least, a single song, like these were two albums I could recommend to you. And like a single song I really like is by Sarah Connor. I think it's called Christmas In My Heart. It's really beautiful. I also really like it. Moving on to some movie recommendations. Personally, I kind of separate my Christmas movies into like the really good ones. But those ones I like to say for like Christmas Eve, Christmas Day and like those days in between Christmas and New Year's. But then, of course, during the first three weeks of December, you already like need to get into the mood. You also need some Christmas movies for those time, but you can't use any of those really good ones yet. So you kind of need those good, crappy Netflix Christmas movies. Of course, they are bad. Of course, they're over the top. They're really kitschy and everything, but that's exactly what you expect and want a Netflix Christmas movie to be. Personally, yes. I do like those four Vanessa Hudgens Christmas movies, the three princes swap ones. The second one is kind of meh, but the first and the third one, I, hell, I like them. They're entertaining, okay? And also um, the other one, The Night Before Christmas, my mom and I, we watched it for the first time like last week or something. And hey, it was cute. It really was cute. Another Netflix production I really like is Holiday in the Wild. This is definitely different from those Vanessa Hudgens ones. Like this is not over the top kitschy or... I don't know, this is actually really cute. It takes place in Africa, in Zambia, on a elephant orphanage reservoir in like the wild and it's really cute. And now to those good Christmas movies that I like to watch between the years, as they say, that uh, while you were sleeping, an old movie starring Sandra Bullock, it's super cute. The Holiday, the classic Christmas movie starring Cameron Diaz and Kate Winslet. That's uh, the movie we like to watch on Christmas Eve, actually. Another one that I love so much is Little Lord Found Leroy, like the really old adaptation. Like, I don't know if there are any other adaptations, but even if there are, I wouldn't want to watch any other adaptation. I, wait, do I know the names of the actors in that one? No, but where I live, they always show a little old Found Leroy on the Friday before Christmas. And I think Christmas is going to be on a Friday this year. So it's going to be like the week before Christmas. They're going to show it on Friday night. And I always watch that. It's it's a Christmas classic. Now, besides that, I also like to watch like the Christmas special episodes of all the series that I liked, especially when I was like younger, like teenager, for example, like the Big Time Rush special Christmas episode or like the victorious one or the Kim Possible one like that that's also like a cute a cute Christmas vibe gets me into the, the mood you know as for audiobooks I can recommend to you Agatha Christie's uh Christmas novels now they are only two I believe one of them is called A Creeper Was Christmas and the other one is kind of like a compilation of stories of both A Creeper Ho and Miss Marple and this is like the audiobook of that second compilation book this features a Cupero and the Christmas pudding, I think it's called, and some Miss Marple stories as well. But if I remember correctly, like I always listen to this while I create my bullet journal for like the new year in those days, like the twenty on the twenty eighth, twenty ninth, thirtieth of December. And I always listen to this. But if I remember correctly, like the the Miss Marple stories in here aren't even Christmas related. But the one with Ecuparo definitely is the one about the Christmas pudding. But now let's talk about books, of course. My two ultimate winter book recommendations are these two books. Now, because I, I don't judge 
whether a book is like a winter book only considering whether it takes place during the winter of course you can do it like that but these two books they give me like ultimate christmas holiday winter vibes so first of all that is mistletoe and murder this is the fifth book in the madamos and lady like series this is taking place during the winter holidays and daisy and hazel are visiting daisy's brother in cambridge so it takes place in cambridge during the winter holidays i love the setting, I love the time that it takes place in. They do all kinds of Christmassy stuff, of course, but then they also serve a murder while they're there. Otherwise, this would not be a murder most unladylike. I talk about this series in um, a video I posted a while ago. It was my YA book recommendations video. So if you want to know a little bit more about the series, you can check that one out. But this is super cute. This is, I think for sure, my favorite book in that series. I also, I even got a, a signed copy of this. So this makes it even more special. <laughs> But now, the book I actually want to talk about in this video is this one, Dash and Lily. Now, oh my god, this cover is really upsetting to me. It is so ugly. I hate it when there are actual people, like real life people on the covers of books. But like, even if that wasn't there, the cover would still be awful. So I believe the English title of this book is Dash and Lily's list of dares or something like that i here have the german version of it which is going to be really weird because i barely ever read books in german these days and um but yeah i mean i'm going to do it anyway so this is a super cute ya holiday romance now i haven't really vocal on my channel that i like like actually neither ya nor romance but they are exceptions to every rule and this is mine but it's actually really cute like it's about these two teenagers in new york city dash and lily and they get to know each other using this red notebook that they not send back and forth but lily deposits a red notebook in strand the famous bookstore and dash finds it and and she has written down like a little puzzle basically and he solves it and so he knows where he has to deposit the notebook and then she picks it up and solves kind of like the puzzle that he wrote down for her and that's how they kind of do like these dare send each other all over the city to do special kind of things while they get to know each other via this notebook but of course in the end they also like meet in person and it gets complicated and all of that it is actually really cute and i really like that idea of like the notebook like when i read this for the first time like years ago i was like i can't do that as well i would love that <laughs> Anyway, it's not like a full-on tradition that I read this every year, but ever since I've gotten this, I think I got this gifted for Christmas like, I don't know, when I was maybe like 15, 16 or around that time. And ever since then, I think I have read it on more Christmases than not. Like, this takes place during the days of, I think, the 22nd, the 21st of December. Oh, wait, you can't see. The 21st of December, and I think, like, the 2nd or 3rd of January. So, it's exactly in that time that it's also perfect to read it. And now, this is not only my ultimate winter book recommendation, but also the fifth feature of my Cinematic Book Club, because last year, this book has been turned into a Netflix miniseries. It's only, I think, eight episodes long, and each of the episodes is only like 20 to 25 minutes long, so you could easily watch it in one sitting. I guess it would be like healthier to watch it in two sittings, but I'll be completely transparent with you. When I watched it for the first time last year with a friend, we definitely watched the entire thing in one sitting. Like, we had some good Korean food, and we watched that and that was a good night it was a good night i can only recommend it to you it is my plan right now to read this over the following days and as i'm reading it i also want to rewatch that netflix series because i remember i also really enjoyed it i think i'm like i'm gonna read a couple of chapters and i'm gonna watch an episode then read the next couple of chapters watch the next episode you get the drill if you want to hear a bit more about what's actually happening in this book continue watching i will tell you all about it and i will show you some clips from the series but other than that i hope you enjoyed my winter faves i wrote down this little list definitely make sure to listen to some of that music to the audiobook or to read one of these books but without further ado let's jump into this reading vlog hi guys good morning i have just started to reread dash and lily and i think i have now finished all the chapters that are probably going to be covered in like the first episode 
So basically, Dash has just found Lily's notebook at the Strand and he has figured out all the little clues she left for him. And he has left the notebook for her at a pizza place slash video store. And she picks it up again, solves his little clues, and basically dares him to go to Macy's to kind of like fulfill his next mission. Which for him will be a real feat because Dash is a real Christmas hater. He hates everything about Christmas and Macy's during like the Christmas season is bonkers. But uh, Lily loves everything about Christmas, so obviously we have these polar opposites attracting each other. But yeah, let's watch the first episode so I can introduce you to the characters. Oh yeah, by the way, um, the actor who plays Dash, like these aren't the actors, by the way, like this came out before this turned into a series. Anyway, um, the actor who plays Dash, he must be like a cousin or somehow related to the Sprouse twins. I think he looks really similar to the Sprouse twins, so um, beware. Okay, let's watch the episode and then continue reading. It all depends on the kind of person you are. Angry, well, at least someone knows the words. It's a code. Page 88, seventh line, second word. So here we are. What happens next is up to you. Leave a message telling me how this time of year makes you feel. The clues are going to instruct her to leave the notebook on one of the shelves in the video section. And if you want my name, you'll have to earn it. With a dare. Maybe this is a bad idea. Relatives and platters of food and... Why are you packed? Okay guys, we are now back from our little bike tour. I know I look kind of ridiculous with my big ass earmuffs, but they keep my ears nice and cozy when I'm out biking in the cold winter air, so that's all that matters. Anyway, we're back. We had delicious lunch and like a little treat, a canule. Is, is that what it's called? Yeah. I mean, I just ordered it, but I've already forgotten. <laughs> anyway, um, so I'm now going to continue to read. I watched, I already watched the second episode before too, but in the second episode, nothing new kind of happens, but it um, reiterates the events of the first episode, but from Lily's perspective. But now in the third episode, um, we're moving on to new events. So see you in a second. Okay, so I continued reading and after Dash has to go to Macy's, he sends Lily to watch Grandma got run over by a reindeer by herself and deposit the notebook at that cinema. Lily leaves it there together with the books full of Christmas cookies that she baked for Dash and now I do want some Christmas cookies too, I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> <laughs> and um, then she sends him to head over to Madame Tussauds on Times Square, another horrifying location to go to during like hardcore Christmas season in New York. So in the series, all the deaths they are now continuing to doing are a bit different than from the ones in the book. But um, so we jump right ahead into the third episode where he sends her to a Hanukkah party at a club and she's all nervous because it's like her first time going to a club. I think this is also going to happen in the book, but I'm not quite there yet because I thought that um, like this one with the Madame Tussauds and everything was going to happen first. But um, I guess they 
cut that out or like they did other desks so we're jumping right into that weird is cool lily and i'm gonna prove it happy annika <laughs> Okay guys, at this point we kind of reach our third act intermission and our third act crisis because not only does Lily get grounded for having gone to the club without like permission from her parents or her grandfather, plus she forgets to leave the notebook at the club so like now seemingly there is no way that um, she can reach out to Dash again, plus for Dash it's his ex-girlfriend that enters his life again. Uh, because she's back from Spain for like the holidays, etc. And they see each other again. At and there's this other guy that is now showing interest in Lily. So there are now all these obstacles. I'm not going to go through all of that in detail. So I think I'm actually going to leave it off here because I don't want to spoil the entire book for you. By the way, um, excuse the sexy look right here. <laughs> I'm cold. Okay. Anyway, I think I'm gonna leave it here. I'm not gonna spoil either the book or the the show anymore. But ah, uh, this is so much fun rereading and rewatching this. I really, really like the story. I hope you will give it a try and look at it too. Um, should I really end the video like this? Like usually, I make sure to, I don't know, look presentable and all of that for like my intro and outro at least. But Hell, can't keep that up forever, I suppose. <laughs> I think I'm going to end the video here. I hope I could inspire you to pick up Dash and Lily's Book of Dares. It's a really cute Christmas story. With that, I thank you so much for watching. I'm going to see you in the next one. Bye. Grandfather, my brother, will never let you see her. He guards her like a jewel. She <laughs>